very, very important. That this movement isn't seen only as a reaction, but as a eruption, an eruption of joy, an eruption of purpose, an eruption of passion for a wholly new way of being and doing everything on every level, in every realm. Well, my vision is one of sacred activism, and if I had to define wisdom for our time, I would define it as sacred activism. And I have two definitions of sacred activism that I hope are useful. The first is that if you bring together the deepest mystical and spiritual awareness and knowledge and peace with a radical passion for justice, then you birth a third force that can change everything. The second definition is a bit more esoteric, if you like, and it is that if you join the fire of the mystic's passion for God with the fire of the activist's passion for justice, a third fire is born, of which Talhat de Chardin said, someday after we have harnessed the tides and gravity, we will harness the energies of love. And then, for the second time in the future, in the humanity's history, humanity will have discovered fire. And this is the brother I believe this is the time of the discovery of that Victoria. fire. And I and believe that as they are now, the two most sensitive groups of people, the mystics and the activists, are both stuck Yay, in a subtle form of Victoria. narcissism. The mystics are stuck in what I would call an addiction to transcendence, an addiction to divine light, an addiction to sensational inner experience. And they have forgotten that the light has created the world, and they have forgotten the duties of citizenship and the duties to stand up for the poor and to create new systems that honor compassion and justice. So they've become couch potatoes, oming and schmoming while the forests burn, while the poor starve. And this is a mysticism which cannot really address the agony of our time. The activists, I believe, are stuck in their own form of narcissism so often. They're addicted to doing. They're very often addicted to indignation and to self-righteous projection of their own unhealed shadows onto others and to a version of reality which makes us and them separate. This is fueled very often by very noble motives. But as we all know, we're in 2011, the activists who've stood up for the environment all this time, the activists who fought for animal rights, have not yet achieved a global consensus, precisely because many, many people feel accused by them, raged at by them, and in very deep ways humiliated by them. But the good news is, is that if you bring the best of the mystic together with the best of the activist, you birth a new kind of human being, which is what I call a sacred activist. And to be this new kind of human being is my deep prayer, and to spread the vision of sacred activism, to fuel a revolution of love in action that is grounded in God, but active on every level, is the purpose of my life and my work.